The wood grain machine quilting design is a perfect way to add beautiful texture and depth to your quilts, whether you use it as an all over design or as a filler. Hey, I'm Angela Walters, and in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to quilt the wood grain design by breaking it down into easy to manage steps. I'll share some tips and tricks I've picked up over the years, plus I'll demonstrate how to quilt it on a sewing machine and a long arm. So let's get to it. Since this design is quilted from edge to edge, we first need to pick a defined area to fill in. This could be the whole quilt, it could be in between blocks, or even a marked area. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating how to quilt the wood grain design on this panel that I designed exclusively for this video series. And I'm going to fill in this pink area with the wood grain. Now, this design is composed of two different shapes, a wavy line and a pointed arc that is kind of like a knot. First, I'm going to show you how to quilt the knot, and then we'll see how to apply it to the quilt. We're going to quilt a pointed arc shape that echoes in on itself and back out. I'm going to leave about a half inch gap, and then I'm going to echo the shape I just quilted. Now I'm going to simply echo my way back out. Let's see what that looks like. So I started from one side, I've quilted my arc, I kept going until I ran out of room, and then I echoed my way back out and onto the other side. It doesn't have to be symmetrical on both sides. I basically just want a shape that's pointier at the ends and wider in the middle. It's the shape that's gonna give it a different texture as I combine it with those wavy lines. It's kind of funny because when I'm demoing this design in a class or a video, my knots tend to look really nice and, and round. However, when I'm actually quilting, they tend to be more elongated and more pointed. It doesn't matter. Again, I just want to make sure I have something that's wider at the center and pointer at the ends. Now let's pull out that panel and see what it looks like to combine this shape with the wavy line to create our wood grain. I prefer quilting vertically on my sewing machine, so I'm going to be working this way to create the design. Starting from one edge of the area, I'm going to quilt a wavy line that goes all the way to the other edge. This wavy line is going to be the base on which we build off the rest of our design. Now we don't want a line that's too wavy or a line that's too flat, just something that has a nice, gentle, repeating wave to it. Now once I hit the edge of my area, I'm going to travel along about a half inch away and then echo the line I've just quilted. The trick to echoing is to look ahead of the needle and to try to move in a smooth movement. It doesn't have to be a perfect echo, we just want it to somewhat resemble the first one. Now if this is your first time machine quilting this design, maybe just echoing the wavy line a couple times will help you get into the swing of the design. But once you get the hang of it, it's time to start adding those knots. So I've ran into the edge of my area, I'm going to travel again about a half inch and I'm going to do the same thing echoing my way back. But at random spots, I'm going to add in those knots with the shape that we just learned. What I like to do is to look for a little hill, and I like to kind of nudge it right in there. I'm going to echo that hill, but instead of continuing on, I'm going to go back up to create that knot shape. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier, echoing my way to the inside, leaving myself room to come back out and continuing on in the direction that I'm heading. Now once I'm finished with that knot, I'm going to come right back out the other side and continue right on with my wavy line. And there we can see the first knot on my wood grain. So notice how it swoops out a little bit. It's kind of changing that wavy line and it's adding a little bit more texture to that area. That's exactly what we're going for. And that's basically all there is to the design. So let's keep going and I'm gonna give you some pointers that will hopefully help you get the best results. You can add as many or as few knots as you like. I kinda like to space them out a little bit, but you can definitely do it however you like. Now moving in a vertical motion definitely gives me more control of the quilt since I can use all of my arm's momentum to push and pull back and forth. But one of the downsides is that I can't always see where I'm heading. As I'm pulling the quilt towards me and echoing that line, it's really hard to see where I am. But I'm just kind of looking behind the needle and continuing on. Honestly, it doesn't matter if your lines get closer or further apart or if they even touch a little bit, it's still gonna have a beautiful texture once you're all finished. The most important thing about quilting this design is that you don't want any noticeable gaps. So I'm trying to keep the spacing consistent, but I also know that it's going to look fine once I fill in that whole area. 
Another thing to remember, it's the distance between the lines that gives this design its density. So it doesn't matter how big or small you make your knots, just as long as you keep the spacing between your echoes consistent. So if you want a less dense design, space out those lines about an inch. If you want to use this design as a filler, you can quilt it really dense by bringing those lines closer together. All right, once you have the hang of quilting those knots and those wavy lines, let's talk about trying to keep them close together. One thing that will really help you keep your lines nice and close together is to keep those pointed parts of your knot close to a previously quilted line. This is the point of my knot. Notice how it's close to that other line, about a half inch away. That's gonna help keep this design nice and compact. If that point happens to angle away, it's no problem. We're just gonna add some more lines to fill it in. Now let's look at this example. That point is kind of angling away from my previous quilting. As I come around it and go back into echoing, I'm gonna have this gap right here. And I think that people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice a mistake. So if this happens, I'm just gonna throw a couple more lines in it, fill it in, and then move on. Once you get done quilting the whole area, you won't even notice. What's really fun about this design is that you're never really gonna know what it looks like until you're done. I'm using this darker gray thread so that you can really see what I'm doing. But if you bought the coordinating thread kit that goes with this panel, use the light pink thread. Using a matching thread color is really going to let the texture of the design show through. Now I happen to be filling in an irregularly shaped area. As you can tell, I kind of have this curved side right here. And all I'm going to do is add more wavy lines and more arcs and make sure that it's all filled in. And if I happen to get stuck, I'm just gonna travel along the seam of my panel to get back out. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The most important thing is that the whole area is filled in as completely as possible. It might be kind of weird to think about using this design to fill in all those odd shaped areas, but it really is perfect. Since I'm traveling along the edge, it doesn't matter if that edge is curved or straight or at an angle. I'm just gonna use the traveling and then continue on. One common thing that comes up when quilting the wood grain design is that some quilters will get a little bit nervous about quilting those lines wavy enough. If you happen to find that your design is getting kind of flat, it gets a little bit more difficult to add the knots of our wood grain. Like here, my lines are pretty straight. There's not a lot of movement. There's not a lot of hills to tuck those knots into. It's also gonna just not look quite as nice. We want a little bit more wave to give it that pretty look. I'm gonna travel along the edge of the area about an inch or two. I'm gonna give myself a brand new start with a new wavy line. That's gonna help set me up so I can continue on quilting those knots. The only problem is though, now I have a gap in between my previous quilting and that line. And we both know that we don't want any gaps in the quilting. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna echo and fill it in. It doesn't matter what I put in there, as long as it's filled in so that I can continue on. Once it's filled in, I can continue quilting along, adding my knots and my wavy lines. Well, I'm gonna finish filling in this area so we can kind of get a sense of what the whole thing looks like. And what's great about this design is that once you get the hang of it, it goes so fast. And the result is a gorgeous texture that's quick and fun to make. If you've been trying to quilt this design and you just can't seem to get the hang of it, no worries. I've put together some additional resources to help you out. First, I've put together a downloadable PDF with quilting diagrams and tips on quilting this design. Try tracing over the lines until it clicks and then give it a go at the quilting. But if you need just a little bit more help, I've put together an expanded resource with up close pictures of the quilting, even more diagrams, and of course, lots and lots of tips. You can find both of those resources just by clicking the link in the description box below. But if you're looking for help that's a little bit more hands-on, I've designed a fabric that's just like training wheels for machine quilting. 
Quilt along the lines of the fabric to get the idea of how the design goes together. When you're done, you'll feel more confident with the design and you'll have a pretty whole cloth quilt to hang on the wall or give as a gift. With three different color options to choose from, you'll enjoy quilting it as much as the finished result. Well, now that we know how this design goes together on a sewing machine, let's see how I do it on the long arm. Plus, I'll show you some fun variations. The biggest difference to quilting this design on a long arm as opposed to a sewing machine is that we're always going to work horizontally. Since this design travels from edge to edge, it wouldn't make much sense to do it in a large area vertically, since I'd have to advance the machine in between each line. So that means if it's a larger area, I'm going to quilt it horizontally or load the quilt sideways so that I can still quilt it horizontally. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. I'm still going to quilt my wavy lines and I'm still going to add those knots and just fill in the area as much as possible. I also want to keep both sides of this design somewhat even. I don't want one side filling up faster than the other. Since I only have so much throat space on my machine, I want to progress down the quilt evenly. Now what's great about the wood grain design is that you can come up with so many different variations. In this variation, instead of quilting a knot, I'm going to quilt my arcs just like I did before, but this time I'm going to close it off. So now I have what looks like a pointed oval gap in my quilting. Then I'm going to fill in that shape that I just created and work my way to the other side and then continue on echoing those wavy lines. What this is going to give me is just a little pop of a different texture in amongst those wavy lines. I can add as many of these little pops of texture as I want. I can make them big or small, or I can even change up the different filler that I'm using in them. This particular variation isn't necessarily about all over texture. Your eyes are definitely going to be drawn to those areas that have the different fillers in them. So I would use this in an area of the quilt that I really want to draw attention to, or if I want to draw attention away from somewhere else. What I love about the wood grain design is whether you quilt it on a sewing machine or a long arm, it is a quick, beautiful design that's going to work in so many different areas of your quilt. Now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the exclusive panel I designed for the challenge, fill in the area highlighted in red with the wood grain design or the variation of your choice. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know by leaving them in the comments below. I love to peek in there and see how you're doing. I'll be back next week with another video tutorial where I'll show you how to take one shape and create so many different effects. Until then, happy quilting. To learn more about the free motion challenge quilting along, visit fmqchallenge.com.